Hi, this training is about the overall structure and flow of the En-ROADS Climate Workshop. Its purpose, of course, is to build the capacity to take effective action. So what we find works really well is to help people create a vision of the future that they really want to see, fall in love with that vision, with their heart, not just with their head, and then figure out what can be their role in making something like this happen, particularly helping them see the difference between the high leverage actions and the low leverage actions. It's kind of like, if you would, thinking about in planning a house, the possibility of building a model of your dream house. Is it gonna have a driveway? Is it gonna have a garden? Is it gonna have this kind of roof or that kind of roof? Make some of those distinctions about what needs to be there, but also see it and feel it and know why you really want it as a way to then figure out what's my next step in making my dream house happen. This is somewhat in response to a challenge from one of the people who helped kick off Climate Interactive a long time ago, Peter Senge, who told us that many environmental leaders were very, very good about talking what we, about what we don't want in the world, but not doing as good a job of talking about what we do want. This schedule is built around helping people create a vision for climate change that we actually do want. All right, so how do we do that? Well, in the first 10 minutes, here are some of the priorities. If people are coming in and you're setting things up, you really want to get participants speaking early, talking to each other, talking to you. This is not a presentation. It is interactive. Secondly, don't go more than 10 minutes without moving a slider in En-ROADS. Maybe you're not going to explain a lot about it. Sometimes I'll just move up carbon price and down carbon price to show what's going to be happening with the simulator. Move the sliders. Early on, show that it's okay to be wrong. Talk about a mistake you made or talk about a misunderstanding of climate that the modeling helps you correct. Start demonstrating it's okay to change your mind early in this workshop. Also signal that all views are welcome. One good way to do that is to name something that you don't really like as a policy and indicate that it's okay to include it in the model. I'm not a big fan of nuclear power. That doesn't matter for facilitating the workshop. I want to show that it's okay for that to be included here in the workshop. Also, we've taught you, there's another whole workshop, excuse me, a whole training on how to build confidence and credibility in En-ROADS. So early on, say that sentence. We built En-ROADS with MIT and Climate Interactive with using the best available science, that whole speech that is in a whole other video. So then what you got to do is surface from people what's on their minds about addressing climate change. You can give them this piece of paper that's on our website of all the possible things that they can consider. You could ask them a really broad question like this one I did in poll in, in a polling software for an online group. What are the kind of approaches we should take? What, how can the world maximize its impact on climate change and equity? What is on people's minds? You could do it as a poll of all the 18 possibilities where you get a poll of what everyone's thinking about. Or there's another version that we'll share where you just show the interface and let people point and click on the, the poll to select what they'd like to do. So either way, and maybe sometimes it's on a whiteboard, if you're physically together, brainstorm a bunch of things. But what you want to do is have access to choosing one thing of the many things that other people are suggesting. Pick one that serves your interest as the first test. In my experience, that's usually something that is somewhat low leverage. Often the first best insight it will be to show something that people think has a big impact, like new zero carbon, that actually doesn't, and show them why that's the case. Another approach can be that if you're in a place where people are kind of defensive about whether they're helping a lot, uh, why not say what's one thing that you've been working on that you feel like has had some impact on climate that if everyone in the world did it, it might have a big impact so that the first test can be people feeling good about a contribution that their business has made or their government agency has made. That can be another approach. Either way, find something to start with first. There's a whole uh, 
And there's a whole uh, video on two things. One of them is the baseline explanation. So you need to explain the baseline and then also how to do a policy test. You don't just click it and then say, here's what happened and move on. You really want to slow the process down, talk about equity, talk about what's going on in the system behind your test, etc. So watch that other training on how to do it well. But this period is slowly and steadily building to a scenario of success. So maybe new zero carbon energy and renewables, and then you'll, someone will suggest energy efficiency transport. Maybe you pause and have people talk to each other about what they'd like to have next, suggested next, and you'll wanna show electrification, but maybe for this one, you'll wanna show some other graphs. Maybe you'll show carbon price and can make and show other considerations, such as the effect of the, on the cost of energy, or maybe you're gonna to wanna to show other graphs about overall air quality. Overall though, what you're doing is you're slowly building a scenario of success. Here we are at 2.6 degrees and 2.5, and adding methane gets you to 2.2 and growing trees, and asking them over and over, what would you like to test? And then at some point you'll get down to far enough. Maybe it's above two, maybe it's 1.5. You create overall a scenario of success, that scenario for the future that they would really like to see. At this point, you wanna start surfacing the insights that have come out of this experience. Don't just summarize, ideally. Try to surface it from them. If you're in the room with them, ask everybody, what were the biggest surprises? If you're using polling software, Perhaps they write it in here and you can read many back to them. This is an example from a class of students the other day. Then though, take the time to summarize what were the key main points. And I like to hit them, these five. Maybe you'll skip over one, but these are the mains that we tend to hit. There's no silver bullet. There is silver buckshot or using an organic metaphor, it takes more than one seed to plant a garden. That's the first main insight you tend to hit. There's no silver bullet. And it's possible. It is still biogeochemically, technically, socioeconomically possible to avoid the worst case scenarios. There are many low leverage things that don't help quite as much as we would hope that we still may need in the long term, but they are kind of lower priority. And helping people distinguish what those things are as opposed to the higher priority things, which usually are things that keep coal, oil, and gas in the ground within the next 10 to 20 years. All the scenarios that win do that. Number five, there are many opportunities to capture climate-related co-benefits, benefits to equity, or questions that ought to be asked about how to not increase the challenges for marginalized communities by implementing these policies, by pushing people off of land or other challenges such as that. So summarize briefly with your big main points, ideally that they uncovered themselves, and then shift to the feeling, the world of affect and feeling. You must at some point surface how all of this feels to people. So you can just ask, how are you feeling? You can say, turn to the person next to you. Tell them how you're feeling. Juliet Rooney Varga added something to the end of our, our games and workshops where she says, people go to walk to a corner of the room. If you feel this corner, if you're sad, there if you're glad or you're um, mad is another one, and angry, confused. Choose a place for people to walk to, talk to other people. Here on Zoom or using a polling software, we just have people write one word and with word clouds, you can hear how people are feeling. Then a very important exercise that we love, 60 seconds of silence. It's very countercultural. It works really well. I challenge you to do it. What you do is you say, we're gonna be silent for 60 seconds. And I want you to think about this question. What would you love about being part of a world on track to making this scenario happen? You need to say it several times. That's the question. Then you pull out your phone or your watch, set the timer, 60 seconds, silent. You look at here at the camera, you look down, you just wait. 
It can feel like a very long time. It's not a very long time. It is powerful for people. Don't skip this step. After the 60 seconds, open up a poll or in a room, have people turn to each other, write in a notebook what they're coming up with or talk or talk to the whole group. What would you love about being part of the world on track to making this happen? The answers are just beautiful and moving and very powerful for the overall group. This is the part where you're building the vision of the dream house and you're talking about what you would love about it. It is powerful, so do it. Then it's the call to action. What are you going to do next? What's the next right thing? It doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be going to learn about something. It could be having a conversation. It could be changing your career. I don't know. There's a whole range of things that are possible, but this is the payoff. Don't skip this step. Make sure you take the time to say, what are you going to do next? In person, here in polling, have people write it down on a piece of paper, have them talk to someone next to them. What are you going to do next? So there's the structure, my summary. You have a hook, finding something that is on people's minds. Lay out the baseline scenario. Where are things headed if we do nothing? Slowly, step-by-step, step, building a scenario of success, showing what's high leverage and low leverage, and also having people talk about equity. Summarize, pull the summary out of them, then have time for feelings, silence, and vision, what they would love about being part of this future, and a call to action to do something next. Overall, what we're doing is we're countering the challenge in our movement of just talking about how bad it is going to be if we don't do anything. Instead, we are building a vision, a vision of our dream house, a vision of the future that we really want to see. Build that vision, help people fall in love with it, help people see the difference between what's really an important policy to get there and not an important policy to get there and lead them to action, to go do something next, to create something that they really want to see in the future. You can do it. Go get them.